Let's consider an example solid catalyzed reaction, CO oxidation. So this reaction is a combination of CO, one half oxygen to form CO2. In addition to its practical importance in treating pollutant carbon monoxide in car exhaust, this reaction is also one of high fundamental importance. So based on the apparent simplicity from the reaction stoichiometry, it's been the subject of mechanistic studies for over a hundred years. Experimentally, it's observed that at low temperatures over small platinum nanoparticle catalyst, the rate is observed to be proportional to the pressure of oxygen and inversely proportional to the pressure of CO. So Langmuir first proposed the following sequence of elementary steps to describe the reaction mechanism for CO oxidation. So the reaction starts with a equilibrated absorption of CO, followed by molecular absorption of oxygen to form adsorbed O2. That O2 then dissociates with another surface site to form two adsorbed oxygen atoms followed by a langmuir hinshelwood type reaction between adsorbed carbon monoxide and adsorbed oxygen to form bound CO2. And finally, CO2 desorbs from the surface of the catalyst. So here, these reactions do not occur all the same number of times to complete one catalytic cycle. So we can keep track of the reaction stoichiometry of each step, uh, so we'll denote this sigma. So Sigma for the first step is two. For the second and third steps involving oxygen, it's one. And for our final steps, it's two. So what this means is for one catalytic cycle, step one here must occur twice. Step two just occurs once, as does step three. And step four and five occur twice for every time that step two or three occur once. So in this mechanism, Langmuir uh, proposed that the associative absorption of oxygen onto the platinum surface is taken to be the sole kinetically relevant step or the rate determining step. So we can write that the rate is equal to, say here the turnover rate is equal to the rate of that second step. So it's equal to a reaction rate constant K2 times the pressure of oxygen times our coverage of free sites. So here this is coverage rather than concentration of free sites since we're looking at a turnover rate so a rate is divided by the total number of sites. So to write the rate in terms of measurable quantities we can write a site balance. So here this will be a coverage site balance so it divided through by the total number of sites relative to the one that might be more familiar from the previous videos. So we can write that the total coverage which is one total number of sites is equal to the coverage of vacant sites plus the coverage of CO plus the coverage of oxygen atoms plus the coverage of O2 plus the coverage of our product CO2. So it's known that under these conditions, the coverage of carbon monoxide is much higher than that of any other adsorbate. So when this is the case, we call CO the most abundant reactive intermediate. So this is often just abbreviated the MARI, so this is the most abundant reactive intermediate. So if CO is our most abundant reactive intermediate, the site balance simplifies to one equals the coverage of vacant sites plus the coverage of CO. So since we took CO adsorption to be quasi-equilibrated, we can write that the rate of adsorption of CO is equal to the rate of desorption of CO. So this allows us to write an expression for the coverage of CO with respect to the coverage of free sites. So we can write the equilibrium constant for adsorption times the pressure of CO times the concentration of vacant sites is equal to our coverage of CO. Inserting this expression into the site balance, we can write that one equals Concentration of vacant sites, which we can now factor out, times one plus K1 times the pressure of CO. 
And so here we've now found an expression for the coverage of our vacant sites, all in terms of measurable quantities, the pressure of CO, and the equilibrium constant for CO adsorption. So now we can express the rate as the reaction rate constant K2 for adsorption, molecular adsorption of oxygen, times the pressure of oxygen, times the concentration of free sites, or the coverage of free sites, which will be this expression here, so 1 over 1 plus K1 times the pressure of CO. So here you'll notice the exponent and the denominator is 1, since we only have one site involved in our rate determining step. And in our denominator, we can see terms associated with the coverage of free sites and the coverage of CO. So these will be um, technically the coverage of free sites divided by the coverage of free sites. And this will be coverage of CO divided by the coverage of free sites. So if the surface is nearly covered by CO, so the coverage of CO is approximately one, this term in the denominator on the right here, the coverage of CO will be much larger than one. And so our rate equation can simplify to this form. This will be equal to K2 divided by equilibrium constant K1 times the pressure of oxygen times the reciprocal of the pressure of CO. So this agrees with the experimental rate law that we started with at the beginning with an apparent rate constant of K2 divided by equilibrium constant K1. So we could note here that the apparent activation energy that we would measure would be the activation energy of step two minus the absorption energy of carbon monoxide. So we'll have a subsequent video uh, looking at apparent activation energies for these complex reaction mechanisms. So does this agreement with experiment prove that this is the correct mechanism for CO oxidation? Not necessarily. So we can never prove a certain mechanism. We can only disprove mechanisms based on their inability to account for representing reality, that is experimentally measured rate data. So in this case, the agreement with experimental data does not demonstrate that this is the true reaction mechanism for CO oxidation. Additionally, there may be some things from a chemical perspective of this mechanism that we might be skeptical of. For example, this seemingly facile rate determining step of molecular adsorption of O2 on the catalyst surface. Additionally, there may be some difficulty in dissociating oxygen on a CO covered surface. Note that if we took this step two to be quasi equilibrated, that molecular adsorption, we would have a two in the exponent in the denominator, which would not agree with experiments. So let's propose another mechanism. So if you are an O2 molecule on a CO covered surface, you may use a CO molecule to aid in your dissociation. So our sequence of elementary steps involves quasi equilibrated molecular adsorption of CO, followed by quasi equilibrated molecular adsorption of O2. Then we have a reaction between O2 and CO on the surface. So this is the CO assisted oxygen dissociation step to form CO and O. Then we have our langmuir hinshelwood step between CO and oxygen atoms to form CO2 as well. And then finally, we have the reversible desorption of CO2 from the catalyst. So the stoichiometry of our steps we can write here. So the first step it needs to happen twice for every time the second and third steps happen once uh, and the fourth. And then finally, we have the CO2 desorption step happening twice. So here, if CO assisted oxygen dissociation is the rate determining step, so this third step, we can write the rate as two times the reaction rate constant K3 times the coverage of O2 times the coverage of CO times the total number of sites. So since molecular oxygen and CO adsorption are quasi equilibrated, we can write the coverages of CO and O2. So we can write that the rate of adsorption of CO is equal to the rate of desorption of CO. And so that gives us an expression for the coverage of CO as a function of the vacant site coverage. And then we can similarly write an expression for 
molecular O2 adsorption, which gives us a coverage dependent on the equilibrium constant for O2 adsorption, its pressure, and the vacant site coverage. So inserting this into our rate expression, we can write that the rate is equal to two times the reaction rate constant K3 times the equilibrium constants for O2 and CO adsorption times their pressures times the concentration of free sites squared times our total number of sites. So we can express the coverage of vacant sites using a site balance. So we can write that one is equal to coverage of our vacant sites plus that of CO plus that of O2 plus that of oxygen atoms plus that of carbon dioxide. So assuming uh, CO is the most abundant reactive intermediate, we can simplify this to just the coverage of vacant sites plus the coverage of CO. So using this expression, we can solve for the vacant site coverage. This is simply equal to one over one plus the equilibrium constant for CO adsorption times its pressure. So now we can write our rate expression. Now that we have expression for our vacant site coverage in terms of measurable quantities, so it's gonna be equal to two times the rate constant for CO assisted oxygen dissociation times the equilibrium constants for CO and oxygen adsorption times their partial pressures divided by one plus the equilibrium constant for CO adsorption times its pressure squared times the total number of sites. So here you'll note in the denominator we have an exponent of two since our rate determining step involves two surface sites. So if the surface is mostly covered by carbon monoxide, that is that if K1 times the pressure of CO is much, much greater than one, we can simplify our rate expression to two times K3, K2 divided by equilibrium constant K1 times the pressure of oxygen times the reciprocal of the pressure of CO. So here's our apparent rate constant. And we have orders in oxygen and CO that agree with experiment. So here we have a second mechanism that also agrees with experimental observations, but has a very different physical interpretation. So here we've seen how we can develop rate expressions for full catalytic reactions from a sequence of elementary steps and then how we can use chemical intuition to be a guide to differentiate between mechanisms when there are more than one that fit the experimental data.